Welcome everyone! In this video, we are going to be diving into my top 5 best teams for the Weather Cup. Now, the Weather Cup is a brand new specialty cup that's going to be taking place in the Great League format, which is a max CP limit of 1500 or less. And the only types that are allowed in this new specialty cup are fire, ice, water, and rock. So uh, not too bad, uh, pretty limited meta, but we have seen uh, more limited metas, let's just, let's just say that. And uh, on the surface, it may seem to be, be a bit RPS, that stands for rock, paper, scissors, for those of you who are unaware. But because it's relatively more broad than other uh, specialty cups that we have seen in the past, that means that you can uh, mix it up a little bit and uh, you'll actually find out that it's not quite as RPS as it would appear on the surface. So uh, should be some fun. Uh, it's going to be going alongside the Open Great League. So uh, very nice to have a... a um, open meta to go back to you know if you get a little tired of the limited format of the weather cup but um yeah brand new cup should still be fun and without further ado let's have a look at team number one all right guys here we go team number one a triple water team for the weather cup it leads with pelipper on the lead Lantern on the safe swap and Toxapex in the back to close the game strong. Pelipper on the lead is going to be very strong. As I do predict, there will be a lot of Swamperts and a lot of Obama Snows in this meta. So Pelipper having wing attack and being a flying type can uh, do quite well there. So let's have a look at the scorecard here. And here we go. Not bad at all. Very strong scorecard for team number one here. We get an A for coverage, A for bulk, A for safety, and a B for consistency. That is very solid, I will say myself. Uh, so let's have a look at these matchups here. The one glaring weakness to this team would be Lantern, uh, especially if you choose to lead with Pelipper. I would recommend leading with Pelipper uh, and sort of run this as a somewhat ABB style, whereas Pelipper on the lead protects the back two Pokemon from Swampert. Um, but if you do encounter a Lantern on the lead, it's not gonna be not gonna be fun, but it's still doable at the end of the day. Um, so what you'll do is obviously you're not staying in there whatsoever. Pelipper can do absolutely nothing to Lantern. Lantern is the kryptonite to a Pelipper. So you're going to go into your own Lantern uh, and try and entice them to stay in the mirror. If they don't fall for that, it's okay. Uh, you're going to want to try your best to flip switch, if at all possible, or grab a shield advantage. Uh, a Lantern lead is going to be the uh, toughest obstacle to overcome for this team. But it will take a team effort between your own Lantern and Toxapex. As Toxapex can deal some nice neutral fast move pressure and is bulky enough to withstand the super effective uh, fast move pressure coming back from that Lantern. And uh, if you have shields down and a health advantage on Pelipper, you could perhaps pull off a miracle with a Hail Mary Hurricane. And that does depend on uh, the shielding and health situations. Uh, but that's the one major obstacle to team number one. Everything else in between is very much doable. Even a Bastiodon lead. If you throw with proper timing and don't allow the Bastiodon to get uh, any additional energy than necessary, Pelipper can do some things there for sure. And uh, the two water types in the back can uh, do okay against Bastiodon as well, particularly Lantern. Uh, as it is much more spammy with its uh, surfs than Toxapex is with its brines. So Basti leads still not so bad. Um, the way I, I think the ideal way to play that um, is to get off a couple of weather balls. Uh, you will have to shield up a stone edge, but once you get the Basti's health low enough, you can make a play in the lantern. The shielding priority, I would say, must go to Pelipper with team number one as the back two Pokemon, quite bulky. Uh, they don't necessarily need shields to perform, perform excuse me, at their best. Um, so those are the two major leads I've wanted to uh, go over. Everything else in between pretty straightforward. Um, 
And Alolan Sandslash could be challenging as well, much like Bastiodon. Although Alolan Sandslash is nowhere near as bulky as Bastiodon is, and the fast move pressure is not super effective, and uh, Pelipper does outpace. So Alolan Sandslash on the lead, still not so bad. Um, Frostlass on the lead, be a bit tricky, not gonna lie, could be, but uh, not the worst. Um, you are only taking neutral damage at the end of the day from the Powder Snows, and again, much like with Alolan Sandslash, you thoroughly outpace to those uh, hard-hitting neutral weather balls as well. Uh, you'll have to chip with a weather ball, then make a play into your lantern for the Frostlass leads. I think that's the safest way to play that. Um, and yeah, that's about it, really. Everything else pretty straightforward for team number one. Very strong team. Triple water team for team number one. And it leads with Pelipper on the lead, Lantern on the safe swap, and Toxapex in the back to close the game strong. So that is team number one. With all that said, let's have a look at team number two. And here we go, guys. Team number two. Another very strong and powerful team for the Weather Cup. It leads with Lantern on the lead. Obama Snow running Razor Leaf on the safe swap and Araquanid in the back to close the game strong. Very powerful team here, guys. Uh, my goal with this team was that uh, if we're going to be leading with Lantern, we protect it from those strong ground types at all costs. And that is exactly what we have with the back two Pokemon behind Lantern on team number two here. So let's have a look at this scorecard here. And not bad, guys. Identical to team number one. You get an A for coverage, A for bulk, A for safety, and a B for consistency. Very strong, very solid scorecard for team number two. Let's have a look at these matchups here. So, Lantern on the lead. Lantern ranked number one overall in the entire Weather Cup meta. And that is for good reason. We all know by now, Lantern, about as powerful as it gets uh, for a Pokemon in the Great League. So it's going to have a lot of strong neutral play across the board. Of course, you just have to keep it away from those very strong grass types and ground types like Swampert, Whiskash, uh, even Quagsire, of course. Uh, so if you do encounter one of those ground types, you're going to want to make the play into Obama Snow. And yes, I know I, I always recommend not to go into your hardest counter. But they if they have a Bastiodon or Rock type in the back, they're likely going to look to counter swap uh, with that. And Obama Snow can actually do a lot more damage to those strong rock types than uh, Araquanid would. So that's the only instance that I would recommend going in the Obama Snow. One, it'll shock them, and you may even get one of those powerful Razor Leafs through, which could make a difference in the end game up against a, a groundwater type like Swampert. Um, and uh, it also um, will allow Araquanid to shine in the end game as well. Uh, but if it's a grass type like uh, an Obama Snow or a Credilly, um, you're still going to want to go into Obama Snow. I think that's the safest safe swap uh, for this team. I just don't like Araquanid as a safe swap. It's just a little too risky if they do happen to have a rock type in the back. Um, so that's how I would play the lead losses there with team number two. Uh, everything else in between is going to be quite solid for Lantern. Lantern, very powerful, very strong. When you do safe swap a Bomba Snow, uh, you can prioritize your shields for it, as the, the other two Pokemon, being Lantern and Araquanid, are quite bulky and can perform A-OK -okay without shields, so... Uh, and a bomb snow with a shield advantage can be quite formidable in this meta. So that is team number two. Not a whole lot to really dissect here. Pretty straightforward. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what to do on those lead losses, which would be the grass types and the ground types. Uh, so that's how I would play those. So that is team number two, Lantern, Obama Snow, and Araquanid. And with all that said, let's have a look at team number three. All right, my friends, here we go. Team number three, yet another very strong team that you could consider for the Weather Cup. It leads with Toxapex on the lead, 
Cradilly on the safe swap and Swamper in the back to close the game strong. Swamper is going to have amazing closing potential in this uh, Weather Cup meta. And Toxapex on the lead is going to be uh, quite solid. Uh, it will deal very strong neutral damage to most things in this meta. Uh, so let's have a look at the scorecard here. And uh, not bad at all, really. A uh, very solid scorecard. You get an A for coverage, A for bulk, B for safety, and an A for consistency. So very powerful. Uh, so let's have a look at these matchups here. Toxapex on the lead is going to be pretty strong. Uh, it's it's Bastiodon on lead is going to be a little bit tricky, but that, again, that's why we've got Swampert in the back. And Cordelia, depending on the shielding scenario, can definitely put in work against Bastiodon as well. For those of you unaware of Cradili, it is uh, pretty bulky. It has a very similar stat product to Jellicent. Uh, so if you're familiar with the bulk of Jellicent, um, you can just apply that to Cradili, and uh, that'll give you a good idea of Cradili in terms of bulk. Um, so Toxapex on the lead is going to have some problems with Lantern and Basti. Uh, we touched on Basti a little bit. Of course, we've got Swampert. Uh, for Bastiodon and Lantern, um, you can play, you can hang in there a little bit with the uh, Basti. As at the end of the day, Basti, uh, unlike Lantern, is not able to deal super effective damage to Toxapex. And uh, the Brines, although they don't hit too hard, uh, Toxapex has the bulk to hang in there with Basti and uh, really uh, slowly but surely whittle away at the Bastiodon. Uh, Lantern's a little bit different. I would not stay in there on the Lantern. Uh, although you are doing neutral damage with Stab with your Poison Jabs, you have two solid answers to Lantern in the back in the form of Cordelia. Cordelia, by the way, is the dedicated safe swap on this team. I don't like Swampert as a safe swap, uh, especially in this meta. A lot of people are going to be preparing for Swampert. And the last thing you want to do is safe swap your Swampert and have it deleted with uh, three to four Razor Leafs <laughs> from an Obama Snow or any other Razor Leafer, which is why Cordelia always the dedicated safe swap on this team. I would heavily ad advise against safe swapping Swampert for the reasons I named. So with Lantern, you're going to go into Cordelia uh, and uh, look to play on from there. Basti, you can hang in there a little bit, uh, get off a couple of brines, and then you can make the play into Cradili and play on from there. You never know when you'll need your Toxapex. Toxapex is here to handle uh, the uh, grass types to an extent, although it's taking neutral damage. It really has that bulk, bulk excuse me, to uh, hang in there and withstand that while also dealing super effective damage with those poison jabs. That's the value of Toxapex in this meta, to deal with the grass types. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Pretty straightforward. Um, Alolan Sandslash could be a bit tricky. Uh, Cordelia can do some things up against it, but ultimately Swampert is your uh, dedicated answer to those steel types. I think the play with this team here for team number three is to just preserve shields for Swampert. Try your best to clear out the grass type by either uh, catching it on the lead or uh, baiting it out with Cordelia. That's the play, I believe, to get the grass types out of the way. Once those are out of the way, Swampert will absolutely wreak havoc on the rest of your opponent's team. That's how it's designed, and I would preserve the shields for it. Uh, to sweep the end game. Uh, so that's about it for team number three. Pretty strong and solid team overall. It leads with Toxapex on the lead. Cradili as the dedicated safe swap and Swamper in the back to do what it does best. And that is close the game strong. So with all that said, that is team number three. Let's have a look at team number four. All right, here we go. Team number four, another very powerful team for the Weather Cup, leading with Ludicolo on the lead, Cradili on the safe swap, and Bastidon in the back to close the game for you. Uh, so classic ABB line here, um, grass slash water uh, with double rock in the back. Not quite rock hole, I would say, but um, somewhat close. 
Uh, very powerful team. Ludicolo is very interesting in this meta. Um, it is recommended that you run Razor Leaf. And unlike um, Obama Snow, can actually hang in there with uh, the Basties of the world. So let's have a look at the scorecard here. And not bad. Identical to team number three. You get an A for coverage, A for bulk, B for safety, and an A for consistency. Very strong, powerful scorecard for team number four here. And like I said, Ludicolo, very interesting in this meta. Uh, if you catch a Basti on the lead, it's not so bad. Not nearly as bad as if you were a Bama Snow. One, because obviously you're not taking super effective fast move pressure. But two, Ludicolo is actually a little bit bulkier than a Bama Snow. And it has a much better secondary defensive typing and water as opposed to ice. So Ludicolo, very interesting. And if you're able to land one of those massive leaf storms on a Bastiodon, you would be surprised at how much damage it actually does, how much neutral damage as leaf storm hits like an absolute truck. And that is exactly how I would play the Basti lead. I would hang in there long enough to get off one of those massive leaf storms. And uh, then you'll want to uh, dip into your Cradilly. That is quite the chip and dip, I will say, if you're throwing a Leaf Storm for sure on a Basti. But that's how I would play it. If you wanted to be safe, you could run Energy Ball as well. It's not going to hit nearly as hard, but you're not forced to swap to clear that debuff, which does lower your attack by two stages. Much like how Overheat would, um, if you're familiar with uh, the Overheat uh, charge move. Uh, let's see here. Araquanid, a uh, little tricky. Not, not too bad, though. It is taking neutral damage. And as bulky as it is, um, the, the Leaf Storms do hit pretty hard as well. Uh, and Toxapex. So if you do encounter a Toxapex lead... Um, you can kind of hang in there a little bit. You are taking super effective damage from the poison jabs. Um, but, you know, Toxapex is not known for hitting very hard if you catch my drift, guys. So it's not too bad. You could hang in there a little bit, get get some Razor Leaf damage in before making a play into Cradili. Um, But ultimately, you've got Bastiat on to handle Toxapex. Um, and Blaziken is a, is a pretty solid core breaker, I would say. Yes, it is ranked pretty high in the meta, but I think the fact that it's so squishy and glassy, I think some people may give it a try, but then abandon Blaziken, uh, due to how frail it is. It is quite squishy. Um, I mean, guys, it's squishy in the Ultra League where it has a much higher CP. Uh, it's it's even worse in the Great League. So uh, I'm not sure you'll see too many of those. You could see them. It'll take a team effort for sure. Um, but uh, you'll have to try your best. Uh, the, even, even a resisted uh, Leaf Storm will do a metric ton of damage to a uh, Blaziken and... At the end of the day, you're taking neutral damage from those blaze kicks. And if you can successfully shield up a potential brave bird, you're going to be in a decent spot because they're going to be forced to swap out. So not as bad as it would seem. Uh, and a Lowland Sand Slash, I would uh, just go right into Cradili and look to play that out um, as it's, it's not as... Uh, tempting to stay in on an Alolan Sand Slash as it is on Basti as it is completely resisting your fast move pressure and your potential Leaf Storm and as well as your Ice Beam. So that one, it's going to take a team effort between Basti and Cradili to handle that. And uh, do keep in mind that it is Ice Steel, so that means that it takes neutral damage from Rock-type damage. So uh, not too bad uh, for that one. And I think that's about it, really. Um, a Frost Last could be a bit tricky. You are taking neutral damage from the fast move pressure, and the Razor Leafs with Stab really add up on Frost Last. I would stay in there long enough to allow them to get off one Avalanche. I would shield that Avalanche, but the key is to get that Razor Leaf damage off, and uh, you're going to have to sort of tactical maneuver around a Frost Last lead. Um, 
so yeah, that is team number four. Very, uh, very strong, very solid team. Like I said, Ludicolo is gonna be uh, gonna have some pretty solid play in this meta as a Razor Leaf for us. So uh, that is team number four: Ludicolo on the lead, Credili on the safe swap, and Bastiodon in the back to close the game strong. So that is team number four. And with all that said, let's have a look at team number five. All right, guys, last but certainly not least, we've got team number five. Another strong, powerful team for the Weather Cup, leading with Bastiodon on the lead, Obama Snow on the safe swap, and Swampert in the back to close the game strong. Very, very solid team for you guys. Um, a very practical and pragmatic team, yet very effective. Uh, so let's have a look at the scorecard here. Not bad. Very solid. Very solid scorecard overall for team number five. We've got an A for coverage, A for bulk, a C for safety, and an A for consistency. Very strong and solid overall for team number five here. Let's have a look at these matchups here. So Basti on the lead. We all know by now Basti, uh, very good at what it does best, uh, not so good at what it doesn't do. It's, and that, that just means it's a very convoluted way of saying that uh, it's pretty inflexible, I will say. Um, so on the lead, it's going to be pretty solid. Uh, you've got optimal coverage for uh, Lantern in the back and other water types in this meta. Uh, you just want to really protect it from Swampert, and that's why we've got Obama Snow in the back. Uh, Obama Snow is going to be the dedicated safe swap on this team, even with a potential Swampert, because like I said, if you can catch them off guard on the swap and get one of those double super effective Razor Leaps in, just having that little bit of a health advantage could set Swampert up to do well against it in the end game. Um, so that is the key there on the Swampert leads. You're getting out of there into a bomb of snow. Uh, you generally, you do want to preserve shields, but Swampert does need shields as well. So try your best to flip switch, grab a shield advantage if at all possible. And I would just save the shields for your own Swampert. Uh, if you do encounter an opposing Swampert on the lead, uh, a lot of people are going to be leading with a bomb of snow. Uh, that's going to be very good for Basti. Uh, I would play the other groundwater types, that being uh, Whiskash and Quagsire, the same way as I would a Swampert. Uh, catch them. Get get. You will definitely get one of the unless they're like a ninja or a Jedi guys, and they read your mind and you simul swap. Uh, you will almost always get at least one Razor Leaf in on uh, one of those groundwater types uh, on the lead. And that little bit, it's not a little, it's a lot actually, considering that it's a Razor Leaf, uh, will set Swamper up to do well with the health advantage and preferably the shield advantage in the endgame. Uh, Blaziken, uh, yet again... A uh, bit of a core breaker, but um, yeah, like I said, guys, not known for its bulk. It is taking heavy neutral damage from those smackdowns, uh, and you will force shield. So you just stay in there. If they want to stay in and dance around with the Basti, uh, by all means, just soft lose lead and look to come in with Swampert. Don't shield anything. Uh, that That's going to that's gonna prove to be quite beneficial because even, even uh, with a... Shield advantage, Swampert's going to be able to dominate, and a bat, uh, excuse me, a bomb of snow. Uh, if that Blaziken stays in on the Basti, its health is going to be so compromised that even uh, resisted Razor Leafs are going to be uh, quite threatening to the Blaziken. So, not a big deal, really. You just stay in there and soft lose the lead. Uh, and that's about it. Pretty straightforward uh, everywhere else. Um, yeah, very strong, practical team for team number five here. Very solid overall. It leads with Basti on the lead, Obama Snow on the safe swap, and Swampert in the back, preferably with a shield advantage uh, to close the game strong. So that about wraps it up for my top five best teams for the Weather Cup. Like I said, at a glance, it might seem to be a bit RPS, but it'll be a nice departure from the Open Great League. Um and uh, it's always nice to have 
another uh, specialty cup alongside the Great League that you can go back and forth to if you get a little bored with either one. So, uh, should be some fun. It's broader than most uh, specialty cups, and uh, that's never a bad thing. But guys, I had a blast. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching, and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.